Hey everybody, welcome to this episode of Video Explosion here at the home studio in Jersey. Special guest in the house with us today, author and screenwriter, Abdul Majid. What's up, Abdul? What's going on? How you feeling? What's going on, man? We doing well. How about you? Floating all in your neighborhood. That's right. You Dynamite and solid gold. Dynamite, solid <laughs> gold, all that and then some. Yeah. I'm from New Jersey, and I spent a lot of time in Brooklyn, but I'm from New Jersey. In one year, I went to school in California, in Pasadena, a school called Marshall Fundamental High School. In my high school, Jaleel White went to school. And then in the neighborhood, you had Lark Voorhees, who was in um, Saved by the Bell. So the school used to get free tickets to go see screenings of different TV shows. So we got to go see A Different World, we got to go see Family Matters, and in one of those trips, I was like, that's interesting what they're doing, but what is that guy doing? I also had lights and boards, and, and I was like, I wanna know what that is. And then around the same time, my father gave me the what do you wanna do with your life question. And I was like, well, oh, I wanna work in TV, because I didn't really have an answer for nothing. <laughs> I just said, oh. And he was like, okay, well then. And at the same time, my parents were not, not getting along, so they got divorced. I moved back to New Jersey. I went to school in Scotch Plains. Uh, in this particular class that I chose uh, was a TV production class. And in that class, you literally learned how to step-by-step -step work every instrument in a, in a television studio. Around the same time, there used to be a commercial on local cable for a cable station in Avenel, New Jersey called Suburban Cables. Yes, yes. And they were offering internships. And I went and got an internship. And from the internship, I, I was able to take the stuff I learned from that class and actually use it as an internship and it helped me out tremendously in terms of like uh, just them to give me the uh, responsibility to do other things. So I got to direct there, I got mm -hmm. to technical direct. I just wasn't, you know, at first they had me out there just holding the, the shotgun mic yes. and getting the sound for football games, what have you. But then after that, because they knew I knew the technical stuff from Mr. Hooper's class, I was able to move on and on and then that being on my resume, a couple years later, got me a job actually in television. Oh, that's cool because absolutely from Mr. Hooper's class, which I also had at the same high school for TV production, so yeah. I can relate. Yeah. It was really a good platform to learn how to produce, yeah. direct, mm -hmm. write, operate a video camera. Channel 36. I look back and I still have the footage of myself on camera doing interviews in the hallway. Hello, my name is Abdul Majid, and I'm here with Kiana Montgomery. I'm head of education for the Black Student Union. And Lynette Horn, treasurer of the Black Student Union. Definitely, Abdul. And what are some of your favorite positions at that time when you were learning to do video, audio, producing, directing? Did anything stand out? Well, ladies. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Uh, I. So. I gravitated to doing sound early because, like yourself, I started off DJ. I had my cousin Tony, rest in peace, but when I was in the fifth grade, gave me two Technique 1200s and a Gemini Fader. And also, you are also an author. Yes. Can you tell us about that? So I wrote a book. <laughs> I wrote a book called Ignorance is Contagious, and it was a bunch of short stories. And my intent was this. If you know my personality, you know I joke a lot. I just, on and on, I just make fun of stuff. And I had, and I was also in the process of starting to write screenplays. So I wanted a book that mimicked how people spoke because a lot of these books that I read from other people, the dialogue was good, but it wasn't as realistic as what I would hear when I was doing audio. At the time I was doing audio for a television station or uh, called Metro Channels in New York. Mm -hmm. And I had all these dialogue in my head of these stories that people would just tell me, just off the cuff, just tell me these wild stories or some stories that I'd be into. So the book was basically a bunch of short stories based off of these events. So you'd, find, you'd hear the, I guess, what in dialogue version would be the action part of it. This happened, this happened, this happened. And then I would give you the dialogue. And then in the dialogue, at the end of it, would be the lesson. So it'd be story lesson. Every episode, every one had a story and a lesson to it. So the story I told you about this wild party I went to, in the end would be the lesson. And 
initially I tried to write it, but people thought it was funny, they wouldn't take it seriously. And my older brother is like a sage, so he did the lesson part of it, I wrote the story part of it, and the book was called Ignorance is Contagious, and, it, and then we just went out and did relatively well at one point, you know, on Amazon and Barnes and Nobles and other places. Also, Abdul, tell us about your screenplays and your writing for film. Give us some background and also let us know what projects that you've been working on. So screenplays, I got into screenplay because of audio. I was a sound guy at Metro Channels. I had a friend of mine named um, Todd Crusham. So in high school, most people didn't know that from Tuesday to Thursday and then on Sundays, I'd be in New York nightclub because of my internship at Suburban Cable. I met people there, they'd get me to nightclubs. So all the fun nights would be at the tunnel, would be at the limelight, would be at Two Eyes, would be at, you know, China Club, the Kit Kat Club, all the spots would be there. So my parents worked at night. So when they went off to work at seven, I was on the train at eight. And they didn't get back till eight, and I was back by six, got to school. So anyway, so because of that, I had all of these stories, and I was hanging out with all of these people in the music side of things. And I would tell Todd these stories of what I was doing on the weekend. Oh yeah, I was just at this party, I was at that party, oh this, oh you never heard this happen, because I've seen a lot of behind the scenes stuff. And I would tell me stories, those stories that he said, you should write a screenplay. And I said, yeah, you know, something, that's good. And I told a friend of mine, my friend Eugene Napoleon, who is a sports agent, he used to manage all of the and one basketball players. I told him I had an idea for a uh, basketball movie called All in the Game. He said, if you can write it, I can get it made. I said, bet. Never wrote a screenplay before in my life. Read a couple books, figured it out, wrote the screenplay. It wound up making headway in different spaces, gave me some credits, a bunch of other stuff. And I got into the writing aspect of them, screenplays. And then after that, here's, so you know, I, I always say you never know where life is gonna take you but there's always a blessing in the chaos, right? There were these guys who I met who were screenwriters. One of them particularly had a drug addiction, had to go to rehab. He was working for a TV show. That TV show was a popular TV show. He knew I wrote screenplays and he didn't want to lose his job and asked me if I could ghostwrite his screenplays while he was away and he would submit them and then I would get the money for them. And then I got a bunch of jobs, just ghost riding, working for people's stuff. And then a friend of mine suggested me to write uh, for a friend of hers who were doing a pilot for uh, one of the streaming networks. I got on, I wrote several episodes. They, two episodes that they liked the most was mine. So I got to write the closing episode, and episode, uh, episode two in the, in the finale. And then it just started rolling downhill from there. And so they asked me to start writing films for them. So a film that came out last year, it's called Clinic. So you can see it on Apple TV or Amazon or what have you. It's a, it's, a, it's a thriller. And then I did another thriller with that same company. I believe it's coming out in a month or so, month or two, called My Child. And then I wrote, I co-produced and was a writing consultant for a short called Three Blind Mice that made all the circuits and won the awards that can and said Essence and the New York Film Festival. So that's part of the writing journey for me. Abdul, can you tell us a little bit about Clinic? And we will share some content for our viewers, but can you tell us about the premise of that film? Yeah, so the premise of this film, <laughs> it's not my premise, but if, if there was any premise made from a movie that's based on my character, it would be this premise. If the premise is about a girl who wants to get a BBL, and uh, that's a Brazilian butt lift, and the, there's a person murdering ladies who are going under the knives for, her, for their particular reason. So it's a thriller, this girl goes to a clinic to get a Brazilian butt lift, and people just start dying left and right. Nothing, less, nothing better dive than an ass shot, right? <laughs> if you're gonna die for something, it's the cheeks, <laughs> right? 
<laughs> the cheeks to get you out of here. <laughs> Abdul, please let our viewers know about your podcast that's happening. So my podcast is based off of the book, Ignorance is Contagious. And I didn't want to be a contrarian at all. That's like, like I'm not the contrarian guy. But one of the things that I didn't, what di didn't settle well with me was a lot of current black, I don't want to say black, let me rephrase that, urban, because that's a better way to describe it, because it's an all black podcast, so it's the same, urban podcast. Oh, we were just a lot of BS talking, making fun of people, gossipy stuff, and I don't mind that at all. But at the end, I want to pay off. I want a video explosion, as they say. So, my podcast is, we get, find one story. Just, we find one story, no matter what the story is, but it has to be a full story, beginning, middle, and it has to tell a story. And then my co-host, my brother James, Chris and Jay, we give our take on the story. And then at the end, we all have to tell what we learned from the story. So it's just not talking crap about the story, but in the end, there's so educational, like, you know, yeah, we may make fun, we may make jokes, we may, we're gonna tell you what this full story is. But in the end, we have to give you something to walk away with that's not just, oh, I heard this story and nothing more about it. And we do try to give the details and the inner workings of these particular stories. That's why we only choose one story, mm -hmm. because we don't want to go through too many when we'll be able to go and deep dive these particular stories. And it's not a snooze fest, by the way. It is funny. It's very fun. We talk, a l I talk. <laughs> I'm not going to put this on anybody else. I talk a lot of mess. If you know me in my normal life, I talk a lot of stuff that I can't say. All sorts of filth, flooring, flooring, filth. So. Lastly, Abdul, mm -hmm. what can you tell the younger viewers who might want to get into the business of screenplays or writing, mm -hmm. producing, editing? Mm -hmm. What could you pass along to some youngsters who want to break into the business? So, the old way of breaking into the business was that you either had to know somebody or you had to do a lot of free labor. That's how I got into the business. I did. If you don't have anything to offer in terms of a credential or credit or resume, all you got to offer is your free labor. So you wind up doing a lot of free stuff for independence, you, a lot of interning, all stuff that you wind up coming out your pockets for, unless you know somebody. And even that doesn't help because it's not who you know, it's who you know and what they're willing to do for you. People forget that second part, what they're willing to do. I knew a bunch of people yeah. while I was out there, but they weren't willing to do jack. So mm -hmm. you got to get these people who are willing to do stuff for you. But I say the hardest part for myself growing up and maybe John or yourself growing up was the equipment part of it. We had to get our hands on the equipment. The ideas were there. The ideas were always there for us. Yes. It was just yes. getting the equipment and to mm -hmm. tell these stories. Nowadays, with the iPhone, with your, you can buy a $20 live on Amazon, you can get some, a good setup for a hundred bucks, like a really reasonable setup with your iPhone and come up with your own stories. What I would advise people is to put thought into your ideas and make them original, make them close to you, because anyone can smell a fake. We can go that we, you're just riding a wave. Oh, now they're talking about stripper movies, we're making a stripper movie. They're talking about drug dealing movement. No, write what's close to home to you and someone will see the vision and you can put it on any platform you want because it's not like you can't put it out there yourself. So I would say invest in yourself. It's not expensive. Be original. Be close to home. Don't try to be something you're not. I got my first agent off of um, a guy reading my screenplay, told another guy about it. Mm -hmm. His agent called me and said, hey, my friend, blah, 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 blah. And I got my first agent. So I mean, so but you don't need an agent. Honestly, the ideas matter more than anything else. Get your ideas out there, market as best as possible, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, whatever, what have you. And, and whatever, you, whatever you want can come to life, but don't, you know, slight yourself in the, least, in the least by thinking, oh, I need to be, I need to know the Hollywood agent guy, I need to know. No, you can do it from your basement and your home, and you can make millions. And, Lastly, I will say, own your content. People love to take and steal and borrow and whatever else your content. Copyright your content, own your content. Don't cut people in if you don't have to on 
the, uh, you know, the, the ownership of your content because that stuff is valuable. Well, Abdul, thank you for that advice, input for our younger folks, our younger viewers watching, gave them some great information. And we really thank you for being with us today, man. It was good to meet you. No problem. Thank you.